Dean, and welcome to episode number 17 of Slash Tracks Action News. I'm Alex Vanover. And I'm Josh LaRue. Josh, I'm pretty excited about tonight's episode because this show is brought to you by, and also the fine people at, and the people that brought you. Yeah, so be on the lookout for those fine sponsors for tonight's episode. Uh, That being said, Josh, you know what that means, since this episode is brought to you by, and also, we have an opening for a title sponsor for the show. Sure do. Yeah, so um, we're actually going to put the email that you, potential sponsors, can contact us at uh, in the description for tonight's episode, and if you guys uh, would like to contact us or talk about a potential, you know, par- partnership or working with us, go ahead and write us an email, and uh, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, Josh, I couldn't help but notice in the pre-show when we were kind of going over the rundown a little bit, not the whole rundown, just a few uh, things. I wanted to talk. Uh, I'm, I noticed you were drinking Crystal Clear Pepsi, Josh. Oh yeah. Yeah, Josh. <laughs> As you can see, boys and girls, Josh is extremely excited about the... Oh, yeah, I'm drinking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I finally, finally busted out the last one, so... Oh, it's bittersweet. It's bittersweet, man. It's like you're you're happy that it happened, but you're sad that it's it's ending. Enjoying yeah. every drop. It's, it's okay. great stuff. Um, All right. Don't know why it flopped. I think it just scared people. You know? it's, they're like, we can't handle the refreshing, delicious taste of Pepsi uh, being clear. It has to be caramel, dark, <laughs> dark brownish, blackish color. It has to almost look like oil for us to enjoy it, right? <laughs> it's got to look yeah. like it, it goes into a vehicle. Uh, it's like to work. green, green ketchup, purple ketchup. Um, that that stuff like was delicious when Kraft tried to do the, the different color ketchups, but I just, it threw me off so bad. <laughs> you know, while, before we get into the fun facts tonight, the yeah. show actually does have sponsors, not, not a, not a business sponsor, but we want to say yeah. thank you to all of our patrons over on Patreon. Uh, you can, you can become a patron for as low as a dollar a month. And that is the best way to support the channel. Um, there's also a QR code if you do, if you want to donate uh, via uh, PayPal. Uh, you know that's included on the community page of the channel. Uh, the Patreon page we're going to be adding a lot of stuff to that soon. Some uh, live streams, um, special unique content, early access uh, over at the Slash Tracks Network with AD Slasher Librarian and Alex Van over Patreon. Uh, Link is uh, at the bottom of the screen, so check us out. And uh, if you want to, if you enjoy what we do on the channel, uh, you can support us, and we'd greatly appreciate it. Yeah, that's actually. Uh, I'm really glad you brought that up because Josh and I are planning. If you're going to become a Patreon member, uh, we get asked all the time, and I'm serious all the time. They're like, "Why don't you guys just do a, a wrestling theme podcast? Can you guys just do a wrestling only podcast on top of the?" you know, the new show and slash tracks and all this other stuff. You know what? We've listened. And one of the ideas that we think we're like 97% sure that we're going to do is we're going to have like a once a month, uh, Patreon only wrestling, uh, centric podcast. So the only way you're going to be able to get that episode once a month is to actually be a member. And it's as low as $1 a month. So one buck gets you like an hour and a half of me and Josh just rambling about the latest, uh, wrestling news, or like maybe we'll just do deep dives into old pay-per-views. It could be anything. Uh, whatever it is, it'll be fun. But there is a chance at any time I can pull up my creative control card and say, that doesn't work for me, brother. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, uh, you're like, I don't want to talk about Starcade 97, <laughs> Alex. I want to talk about Royal Rumble 92 this episode, you freaking puke. That doesn't work for me, brother. I yeah. can't do Hogan's voice. But. That's not going to work for me, dude. Uh, <laughs> finger poke of doom, probably the way we should go. Nobody's going to care if we do this, dude. <laughs> no one will remember. Just get the title on me. Bring the NWO back. That's what's going to happen, dude. We'll be drinking Miller Lights by the end of the episode, dude. <laughs> hey, uh, 
<clears throat> get into it's been a while, so let's get into some nice, nice comment, mean comment, nice comment. Let's get into the compliment sandwich. <clears throat> let's do it. All right. This is referring to Slash Tracks Action News episode 16. Uh, this is a nice comment. A fun original podcast. Glad your video showed up. And that's from Corral. So another one named commenter. So like Madonna or, you know, whatever. Uh, Adele. <laughs> the one named Cor- Corral. We're so. glad you showed up. See, my dad's name is Carl. I wonder if he just misspelled his name or something. Yeah, he added. He put the A in the wrong spot. He added an I after the Kai. The Kai after the K. Uh, maybe, maybe he had some Miller lights with Hogan, and they were discussing the finger finger poke of doom before they left. A nice comment. Well, Corral, thank you so much. We're we're glad that uh, we found you as well. All right, Josh. It's uh, everybody's favorite part of this segment. We're going to go into the mean comment. Okay. Wow. And this is referring to <laughs> episode number 16 of Slash Tracks Action News. This is when Josh and I were laughing uncontrollably about uh, Vince McMahon trying to introduce the third Road Warrior shit. Instead uh, of puke. <laughs> yeah, instead of puke, it's shit. Animal hawking shit. Uh, wow. It wasn't that funny. Uh, you guys can just chill out. You're both psychos. And that's from Sucra-YT. You know, if you're really afraid that we're psychos, then maybe coming to our podcast and posting something that we could track your IP address with wasn't the <laughs> smartest move. Um, that's like when in The Dark Knight... Oh, no, it's The Dark Knight <laughs> when the um, guy is trying to blackmail uh, Christian Bale and, he's, yeah. and he goes to Morgan Freeman and he's like, hey, I know for a fact Bruce Wayne is Batman. And I can see that you're using the defense uh, department to, fun, you know, to create all his gadgets and his, you know, cars and stuff. And Morgan fought, Morgan Freeman's like, so you think blackmailing a guy who's a billionaire and goes out at night and beats down uh, criminals for fun is a guy is the guy that you should try to blackmail? <laughs> 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 yeah, super YT, slow your roll, bitch. Oh God. Um, I I got it. I, I know you got a format, and I'm sorry. I got to flush the format for just a second because you brought up the Dark Knight. Um, <clears throat> there is a show on HBO uh, Max called uh, I think it's it's Harley Quinn. It's just an animated series, R-rated. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Okay, in a, in an episode, apparently, the Joker is uh, like the Scarecrow is trying to become the Joker's number one right hand man. And he's, he's like, kissing Joker's ass. He catches Batman, and they're sitting there taunting him. And, you know, the Joker doesn't want to see behind Batman's mask. He doesn't want to know, you know, because it's part of the fun. And uh, Scarecrow goes, and look, and you can see who it is. And he takes off. He's like, billionaire playboy uh, Bruce Wayne, you know. And the Joker gets so mad at the uh, Scarecrow for ruining the fun for him. But then the Joker's like, wait a second. Last year, you promised an all-electric car, and we pre- people prepaid. When am I getting my electric car, Bruce? Like, that's all the Joker was pissed about. <laughs> oh, so, like, Bruce Wayne is, like, Elon Musk or something in the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he starts thinking about what... <laughs> Things he did as as philanthropist, uh, multi billionaire business guy Bruce Wayne. He's not even mad at him as Batman anymore, huh? Uh, he's just mad he hasn't got his electric car he prepaid for yet from Wayne Wayne Tech. <laughs> I'm sure the Joker's really worried about an electric car. Uh, it's God. crazy. It's funny. It's just funny. Um, I wonder if the, he needs a car that's ran by Smilex Smilex Gas instead Runs of gas. On Smilex. Yeah. The exhaust fumes will leave you smiling. <laughs> It just murders people as he's anytime he starts his car, the gas, the Smilex gas emitted just kill. They get huge smiles and then they're dead. Done. It, it's it's the fuel that makes Mother Nature smile. Yeah, yeah that now, is I, a slogan. I thought that uh, Crystal Clear Pepsi was that fuel. It is fuel. Yeah, it it, is it's fuel. fuel on me. So, um, so hey, nice comment to end this segment. This is a pretty good one, and this is from one of our friends of the show. So this is going to be three-time nice comment uh, of the episode award winner, Mr. Prex Era himself. 
one of the funniest episodes yet. Josh laughing at shit! Exclamation point! Exclamation point! <laughs> okay, anybody that didn't see the last episode yet, uh, he Alex was doing the Vince McMahon voice, explaining how this went down, and I was just like halfway out of my chair with tears in my eyes. Uh, it, it was great. It was a great clip. You got to go back and watch. <laughs> it's probably that. probably the most fun fun I've ever had on this show or any <laughs> podcast I've ever done for that matter. Uh, and that's like years of working at Fox Sports, doing the previous podcast with uh, my previous partner years ago. Everything we've done, that was the f- most fun I've ever had doing uh, anything. I've gotten to voice Freddie and Chucky and all that, and this was this was this this topped it all. Uh, um, it was great, <laughs> dude. You know what's crazy? We so we didn't even mention. So Josh, we had a hundred and nine thousand views for that episode alone. Yeah. Um, so we, we not only set the record, we smashed it, destroyed it, took a shit on it, and just the record, 109,000 views for an episode of this show is incredible. But you know what's even more incredible is that we lost uh, the contract with our, sp- with our sponsor after we destroyed our record. Uh, they decided not to renew with us. I just think that's, that's just my life in a nutshell. That's just that explains my life right there. I've been inconsolable for a week. Uh, my wife picked me up from the padded room earlier, but I think I, you know I think I'm I'm starting to come around. You know I'm feeling okay yeah. again. I don't take rejection well, um, but uh, no, it we we did we 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 hit a very very high record even for the actually for the channel. Uh, the only two videos over a hundred k views on the channel are like two episodes of paranormal shows I put on there in the beginning uh, when I first started doing the narrations just to give people like a little fun little show to watch, you know, stuff mm-hmm. that uh, was public domain. And, uh, yeah, this one, that was, that was a great episode. I cannot believe uh, they dropped it. The way I always look at advertisement is it's not always about how many sales you make. Uh, from an ad, it's about how many eyes are seeing your product. Yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. And and before we get into fun facts real quick, um, since we're talking about this, I wanted to, I've wanted i told you this off air. When I worked for Fox Sports, the man I worked for that owned the station would not accept any sponsorship for any of his shows or content that was under six months because radio and YouTube is repetition. People have to hear it. People have to know that it's available. You can't force anybody to buy something. If they don't have money to buy it, then they're not going to buy it. The best thing you can do is just let them know this is what is being offered and this is the deal that you're going to get. So when you do need it or when you do have money to get it, here it is and here's a good deal. But it's you know what? That's It's, his, it's their loss. Yeah. It is their loss, Josh, because... We're going places. The show's going places. We're not going to stop. We're going to continue to work hard, put out the best possible content we can, and we're going to do great things. And we're going together, buddy. It's getting better every time because yeah. uh, I won't say the name unless you say it's okay. Are the first sponsor we had for the show expected? Yeah. <laughs> they knew that we were like a weekly to bi weekly podcast. Mm hmm. And they expected one episode of a bi-weekly to weekly podcast to generate, you know, like a thousand cells or something. Yeah, and that was when we, <laughs> that was when we had, I believe we were coming off of Nuclear Grizzlies. We had twenty-seven thousand views, or yeah. th- or that might have even been the Nuclear Grizzly episode. I think it was twenty-seven thousand views with that particular company. Yeah. Uh, they just they decided to drop us immediately. Um, if you want to know the name of the company, it's in the episode. So if you go to the Nuclear Grizzlies episode, it's still they're still getting advertisements from us because that episode still gets views. Yeah, episode um, nine. Or yeah, 10, I think. so yeah. Uh, we're looking we're looking to build with somebody. So we want to grow with somebody. The whole deal is to hopefully build their product, and we can build their our product together and prop each other prop each other up and help each other out uh, to and grow. So- yeah, through yeah. social media too, both ways. Through anything, you know, through anything, through social media, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, when I would post things, 
it was never reciprocated. It was never retweeted. It was never liked. Nothing. Uh, so I, you know, I would really like to see our next sponsor to be a little bit more active. But I also want to say thank you to our previous sponsor because yeah. I really, you know, we really appreciate you taking a chance on us. We really appreciate uh, everything that you know you did for us. And uh, hopefully, maybe one day in the future, you'll decide to work with us. Work with us again. You know, it just didn't work out, and hopefully. You know, we'll figure something out. But you know what, Josh? We're badasses. We're strong. And we're going to make this work. And it's going to happen. It's going to be good. Yep. Right? Yep. And uh, we're psychos. So if that don't work, we'll just scare people into it. Yeah. So Let's get into some fun facts, Josh. And I have some fun facts prepared for the show. But you have a fun fact that you want to share with us first off. Oh, yeah. It's just kind of a quick one. And it goes back to the Batman thing. Yeah. As a kid... I didn't really know much about Two-Face, but as I grew up, you know, especially like with Batman the Animated Series, uh, Batman Forever with Tommy Lee Jones, I really learned the Two-Face character, and I was like, wait a second, I looked it up, it it predated the 1960s uh, TV series, and I was like, why was he never on the show? Well, there was a a character called False Face on there, Uh, you know, he would like disguise himself or something every episode. They never had Two-Face. And it turns out, no design they could come up with, uh, the executives would allow. They said it would scare children uh, having Two-Face on there. But there is actually a script for season one or two. That's when they did the two episodes, you know. And it's about Two-Face. And then they tried doing it again in season three when the ratings were dropping as a single episode. And I found out more since we talked. Not only was Two Face supposed to appear on the show, but the Kevin Smith, uh, you know, written and produced comic book, Batman '66, that started coming out in I think like 2014 or 15. Yeah, I have. Some uh, of those. They had like a sta- like the first issue or something, I believe, or a standalone issue was the script from the 1966 show that was written for the show, and they made it into a comic book. Damn. And and they also infiltrated a lot of that stuff into a uh, TV uh, animated movie. Uh, there's there's two they made with Adam West and Burt Ward voicing Batman and Robin. The first one's called The Return of the Cape Crusaders, mm-hmm. and the second one's called uh, Batman 66 Two-Face. <clears throat> uh, and it's got William Shatner voicing Two-Face out of all people. But if you want to see what Two-Face would have been like, which I think it would have been so awesome. Uh, you can you can watch the animated film, uh, which is also great because it's one of Adam West's last uh, projects. Yeah. Or you can passed. read the com- you can read the comic book. Uh, but the the craziest part was the actor they wanted to play the role, and who was probably going to do it was none other than Clint Eastwood. <laughs> you know, uh, what did I tell you? Uh, do you feel cheesy? Well, do you punk or campy? <laughs> you know, and you that, said it might hurt his career. You really think that would have uh, been the kaput for him? I don't know if it would have been kaput for him, but I think that once you, I don't remember seeing uh, Caesar Romano, the guy who played the Joker, and a lot of stuff after he played the Joker. Burgess Meredith kind of had a career comeback with Rocky yeah. and Grumpy Old Men and stuff, but. Um, <laughs> You know, yes and no, probably. I, I actually probably wouldn't have actually looking back on it because Julie Newmar and a lot of those people were successful afterwards. So, no, I guess not. I'm going to retract my statement. I don't think it would have hurt his career. It would have yeah. been different. It would have definitely been a different look at Clint Eastwood. That's for sure. I thought of one last way to to, to envision how it would have been. You can actually watch Batman Forever because Tommy Lee Jones plays Two-Face in that movie. Like he's on the 1960s Batman TV show. Yeah, he's um, <laughs> he's like uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Like in my head, will forever be his best role. Will be the Fugitive when Harrison Ford's like, "I didn't kill my wife. I don't care." <laughs> Batman's like, "I didn't. I, I didn't. It's. I'm not Bruce Wayne. The the box is lying. Uh, Edward Nigma's lying. I don't care." <laughs> Batman Forever is an underrated film, by the way. I like uh, it. I yeah. like it. Um, Joel Schumacher, that's when he took over after um, what Tim Burton. 
Yeah, uh, it's a dark. brighter movie. It's more colorful. Uh, different take completely. Tim Burton's real dark, real like just classic Tim Burton uh, stuff. But Joel Schumacher did something different and kind of he did something different, but he also kept the core of what was the first two films. Yeah. I think Val Kilmer gets a bad rap. Uh, I think George Clooney was the worst Batman, um, <laughs> hands down. I think when they did Batman and Robin, the nipples on the Batman costume almost single-handedly ruined that entire franchise. Arnold Schwarzenegger, you want to talk about Tommy Lee Jones doing the 60s version? Yeah, Arnold went full 60s, Mr. Freeze, on that one. It's funny you mention that, too. You know, Batgirl didn't get no nipples, just saying. Yeah, um, obvi- <laughs> for <laughs> obvious reasons, probably. But, but yeah, Michael Keaton threw the script for Batman Forever away and said nope when he read it. Uh, Joel Schumacher was hired, like you said, to lighten it up a little bit, mm-hmm. and he did. But it was I still think when I was a teenager, uh, I, I had the VHS and I watched that movie like all the time. I mean, Me my, too. that was my go-to. And uh, but the sad thing is, when they went to make Batman and Robin, Joel Schumacher. Uh, was told to lighten it up more, and he got, he was like, I've already lightened up, I've already lightened it up to the point that it's almost a kid's show, yeah. you know, so he's like, you know what, fine, and every actor on the set of Batman and Robin will tell you this, including George Clooney, uh, they were told, we're filming a live action cartoon, ham it up, uh, Joel Schumacher had enough, that he's like, if they want it lighter, then I'm just going to make a cartoon. And apparently that's why I did it. The sad thing is, me and my dad didn't get to do a lot together. Whenever I was young, I had six siblings. Mm-hmm. But he took me, just me and dad, dad and Sunday out, to go watch Batman and Robin. You know? <laughs> but you have a great memory about that, then. A, fun, a funny memory. About ten minutes into the movie, we looked at each other. <laughs> like this looked like... What the hell are we watching? You know, <laughs> what the fuck? What are they? The, are they a rocket? The <laughs> best, the best part about that movie, before we get into the next fun fact, the best part was Poison Ivy. Yeah, she true. Uma Thurman was fin- fantastic. She's inspired so many uh, great cosplays in the you know the years that have followed. Like she did a great job. Uh, she could have had a spinoff of her own film. Probably she did really good. Maybe I'll be Poison Ivy for uh, Halloween. Freaking hair's, hair your hair's long enough. You just have to, like the Joker on the 60s series, how he actually had a mustache. You could see it if you look closely enough. They just painted over it. <laughs> You'd have to paint heavy, heavy paint over your facial, uh, your face, uh, your hair on your face. Um, hey, Josh, did you know that male giraffes <laughs> sniff and taste the female's urine to see if she's ready to mate? <laughs> oh, my God. Did you know that? <coughs> Excuse me, that real quick. <coughs> Don't you go dying on me. I got COVID, I think. Um. We lost the sponsor and you just started to die. <laughs> like, like Alex, I can't, like, I, I know it sucks financially that we lost the show, but I think I'm dying. <laughs> For real. He's gonna, he's gonna die! Start <laughs> the fourth member of Legion of Doom. Hawk, dead. animal, shit, and death. <laughs> and his uh, weekends at Bernie him to the ring. All right, just God, go ahead and start the fun. <laughs> huh? What? What did you say? I weekend at the 80 Slasher's house. <laughs> no, I was gonna say just, uh... I'm sorry I had to clear my throat. If you wanted to just start the fun fact thing one more time, I'm ready. Dude, we're keeping all that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, male giraffes, they sniff and taste the female's urine to see if she's ready to mate, dude. Did you know isn't, that? Isn't there like a, a porn industry, like a subsection, a genre of something like that with humans? Giraffe I mean? porn? Good lord. <laughs> y- urine, is that what you're talking about? Tasting urine? Yeah. That would... uh. So, like, the giraffes are, like, they go up, they taste the urine, and they're like, mm, no, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and that's a big commitment for them, because their head is, like, up in the clouds anyway, because they have that huge neck. 
So in order to get down to the urine, that's a full commitment. They're ready to bone to begin with, and then they get their head all the way down to the ground to taste the urine, and then they don't get to bone because, you know, she's not ready to mate. You got double some, whammy, dude. Some of them prefer bigger puddles of pee, uh, like longer, longer puddles instead of wider puddles of pee. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, you know, a lot of them don't really go for the short or, you know, small puddles of pee, but... Uh, <laughs> Okay. So you're very familiar with wet work. That's what they call it. It like ads like if you see if it says wet work, uh, it's like some like you're hiring someone to pee on you. That sounds like the porn uh, uh, parody of wax work. Yeah, wet work. Uh, <laughs> wet work. Wet works. Um, Josh, did you know that orgasms can help your body recover from illness? So yeah, you being sick right now. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to write you a prescription to go to the doctor and have them prescribe you two or three orgasms. And then you're going to bring it home and your wife, Beth, is going to fill it for you. Okay. Yeah. You got it's doctor, doctor's orders. Doctor's <laughs> orders. And if you're scoring at home, boys and girls, slash holics, we just talked about an orgasm. So put that down on your bingo card. <laughs> orgasms can heal the sick. And he said, if I get sick, since I'm kind of sick. I need to get a script and bring it to you to fill it. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Josh, if you're convicted of a crime in North Korea and sentenced to prison camp, your family goes with you, too. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, wait. I don't really care for most of my family, so I think that'd be kind of fun. Way to go, Josh. Way to make another shitty life decision. I'm in jail again, thanks to my shithead family member, Josh, thanks a lot, Dick. Meanwhile, everybody they do a, they do a national poll uh, to get the opinion of, of North Koreans' idea on it, and every single one comes back saying, "This is the greatest idea I've ever heard." Supreme Leader, yeah, this they is, all this love is it. Amazing. <laughs> um, I don't know if I, I talked about this on an episode of uh, Slash Tracks News, but I'm going to bring it up again. So, since we're talking about North Korea. Kim Jong-un, is that his name? He's like yeah. the leader of North Korea. When he uses the bathroom um, and he's not like in his house, like if he's traveling, he'll he'll like bring his own toilet uh, so like people can't steal his number two. Like he's afraid they're going to like find North Korea's like greatest secrets out from his dumps. I thought... <clears throat> The story. I thought there was a story of him or another dictator or authoritarian that um, claims they they don't have to use the bathroom. You know, they're so they're so supreme or whatever. They don't even have to use the restroom. Was Is that, that like him? L- no, I no. This guy no. Un brings his own toilet, so he can't be saying that if he has a toilet. Uh, okay. What is it like? L. Ron Hubbard, the guy who leads Scientology. Maybe it, it's something. It's a real story. I know I've seen that somewhere, like re, like a little special report or fun fact, like on CNN or something. I don't have uh, to go to the bathroom. I don't poop. Uh, <laughs> I, I, like pretty much every girl I dated, like in high school, said they didn't poop or fart. We don't I, fart. We don't poop. I don't know if I said this before in a past episode, Alex, but since we're on the subject in North Korea, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> I'll say it again, like you did. Um, they had the best, the best, uh, the, they had zero cases of COVID uh, in North Korea. Zero cases. That's how well Kim Jong-un reported to the world that he handled the situation over there. He, he did it so well yeah. that uh, there was no cases whatsoever of COVID. Not, not even one. Not one. So you don't uh, think and, that... And, and all the people that were in the hospital sick were like, yeah, you're, you're, yes, Supreme Leader, it's not COVID, it's just a cold. You're still doing good. Like, wow. That, that's what he reported. Of course there was COVID. Of course, you know, but like... Uh, no, instead, no, there wasn't because they didn't report any. So, <laughs> no. And there wouldn't have been so much here if we didn't test everybody. Yeah. Uh, How dare they have access to testing uh, uh, <laughs> and just throwing off the numbers. Our numbers are so high because people keep testing. (laughs) 
<laughs> Josh, Josh, did you know that rabies can cause men to ejaculate uncontrollably? Just uncontrollably. That word is the key word right there. Oh, but rabies is a stripper's name, right? No, right? <laughs> Next on the stage, at your, your favorite and mine, rabies! So all you sick people out there, get in the front row and you'll be healed by the end of this dance. The doctor, like... <laughs> We got to bring Josh in. He's not feeling great. What's, what, what are the symptoms? Explain them to me. Well, he can't stop having orgasms, violent orgasms. Uh, they're like literally over and over again. He just It's uncontrollable, the amount of orgasms he's having. He just cannot stop ejaculating. He's dust. Poof. Poof. <laughs> like, it, like your dick is like rubbing a genie's lamp uh, <laughs> towards the end right there. What did Josh die of? What, what happened? Well, dehydration. What happened? He go on a big hike or exercise too much, not drink enough water? No, he just cannot stop having violent, violent, uncontrollable orgasms. <laughs> and he eventually ran out of fluid in his body. We couldn't put enough crystal clear Pepsi back in him to make up for all the stuff that was coming out of his dick. <laughs> hey, my wife's a nurse. She can just, like, you know, intravenous it for me. Uh, so if I, yeah. I, I got to keep the supply going. But yeah. speaking of orgasms, man... Okay. It's now time for the next section of the show, the children's reading hour. What's today's Dr. Seuss? <laughs> <laughs> this is a hey, slash holics. This is a new segment that I wasn't aware that we were going to have. <laughs> this is a segue. Yeah. Bad segue. Uh, Josh, let's get into the last fun fact okay. of the episode. Ultrasonic recordings have revealed that plants squeal. When they're stressed or cut, they can also hear themselves being eating, being eaten. So plants scream when they're being cut, and they also are aware of when they're being consumed. Okay, before I comment on this, I want everybody to know, if you're wondering why I'm like looking down, that's where my monitor is and my camera's up here, and it, you know I'm trying to get reactions from my, like, see my co-host too, but... Um, I've been telling people for years just how cruel being a vegetarian truly was. And now we've got the science to back it up. Um, you need to do the right thing. You need to eat meat um, and quit torturing and uh, devouring these plants that can literally hear and feel themselves being eaten. It, it's it's sad. At, le at, least, well, at least meat eaters are eating something that can't uh, at that point. So that that's crazy. So like when you mow your yard, there's like a thousand blades of grass screaming. Yeah, probably. And, all you know, here's another weird fun fact that I had read and we've never talked about since we're talking about plants and stuff. So apparently trees, um, trees, like if, if the seeds that are dropped from their specific tree form like other trees they will like reach their roots over to the new tree and like provide nutrients to it to help it grow because wow. they like know it's their offspring isn't wow. that crazy yeah it's like plants are a whole different uh ecosystem and world that we don't we don't realize how intricate uh the world actually is what if we found out that we're actually like an alien race on a planet of, uh, you know, plants, grass, and trees that are the actual citizens of the planet. You know, they're the actual uh, life forms. You know, like we're, we're the we're the parasites. We're the invaders. Yeah. Oh, it totally. Hey, that could totally be the case because I mean, all we do is just fuck the world up right now. Anyway, the air, the trees, the land. Everything. It's like the movie They Live, where it's like, consume, consume, buy, buy. Like, that's... Roddy Piper uh, was right 30 years ago. Like, this is... Seriously. Like, I don't know. Maybe. I think you might be right. I think, I think we're probably, man, within 15 to 20 years of getting some sort... I'm going to put on my tinfoil hat here some sort of answer from space. Uh, you know, some sort of uh, signal 
or or something of that nature. All this, all the amazing stuff like the Elon Musk of the world and stuff mm-hmm. are sending out there, and uh, how far we're actually able to send equipment. I think in our lifetimes, uh, we're going to find out if we're truly alone in the universe, which I've never believed. I, I think that's an arrogant thought uh, to believe that we're the only intelligent life form. But uh, apparently trees and plants uh, show more humanity sometimes uh, than us as humans do. So that's, that, was a pretty, that was a pretty cool, fun fact to end on, uh, that even these trees take care of each other. And uh, you know what? Us as people could learn a lesson from that. Dude, so before we get into sports, I'm gonna, I want to piggyback on top of that real quick. So you think it's going to be another 10 to 15 years? Because I think it's already happened. Because aren't they unsealing, like, NASA has, like, un- the government has unsealed video of, like, UFOs? I meant, like, a message, like, uh, uh, and I think within at least 20 years, like, like I know that they've unsealed videos and stuff that's, like, almost irrefutable, like, but I think within the next 15 to 20 years, we're going to actually have some sort of communication with with something i don't know i still want to know what the black sa- black light satellite is that's been circling the earth since long before uh the first uh satellites were launched into space yeah that's a really fun story we could dive into one day on the show okay. um maybe we could have like a tinfoil hat uh like the tinfoil hat minute you know uh, every episode we take 60 seconds to talk about something you know really out there um so I'm not I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today, but yeah, I think I think the videos you're talking about are real, and I think that in our lifetime we're going to have commu- communication as well. So I am going to have to agree with you that I think we're not alone, and there's definitely something out there. Do I know when it's going to happen? No. Do I know if it's happened already? Maybe. Maybe. Uh, you know what I do know is going to happen though right now? Sports. Sports. So let's get into some sports, pal. Okay. All right. Former, four-time, I think even possibly five-time heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield is auctioning off his gloves from the Mike Tyson ear bite fight. Uh, Holyfield wore them in their second fight on June 28, 1997 at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. The high bid at the time of me writing this for the show uh, last Sunday was $12,155. And they're being speculated that they could be uh, <coughs> sold for as high as a hundred thousand dollars. Wow! And I apologize to the audience; it, I couldn't hold that cough back. That's okay, um, man. You're, you're soldiering up, dude, for the show. You're being a trooper. I'm very impressed. <laughs> you yeah, said so one hundred fifty thousand was the latest. Uh, no, twelve thousand one hundred fifty-five is the current bid as of Sunday, but. Uh, experts are speculating that they could end as high as like a hundred thousand dollars. Wow, that fight only went three rounds. It was the rematch. Tyson had gotten knocked out in the first fight in like seven or eight rounds. They have the rematch. Um, Holyfield was headbutting Tyson pretty bad throughout the yeah. fight, the first three rounds. So Tyson got pissed off, retaliated by biting Evander Holyfield's freaking ear off. Um, and they disqualified Tyson. Uh, he had his boxing license revoked in Vegas, and that was pretty much like the end of any legitimate Mike Tyson stuff. He tried to fight later on uh, and win the title from Lennox Lewis, but Lennox Lewis was such a huge, skilled fighter at the time that there was there was really no chance of Mike, uh, an unmotivated older Mike Tyson taking the title back from Lennox. So the last chance Mike had at legitimacy was completely thrown in the shitter after he bit off of Andrew Holyfield's ear that night. Protein, man. Tell me if I'm wrong. Wasn't the ref in that contest, Judge Judy's husband, uh, Judge, uh, what's his name? I can't, I can't think Hold of it. Hold on. Mills Lane was the ref. Yeah. <clears throat> was M- Mills Lane's not married to Judge Judy, is he? I thought they were. No, he J- Mills Lane was the guy who was on Celebrity Deathmatch on MTV. I know who he is. I Let's just get it out. I thought in real life he was married to Judge Judy for some I, reason. I, I thought yeah, they were married. You know what? If you if 
if you guys know that in the comments, can you tell it, tell Josh and I if that's correct? Because I don't know if that's correct. I've never heard that. But if it is, if that's the case, that's fucking awesome. <laughs> if that's the case, that's awesome. Because all that family does is print money then, basically. They're like, I'll be a judge. Now. I'll, be ju- I'll be Judge Mills Lane. And we got my wife, Judy, Judge Judy. I'll be on Celebrity Deathmatch. Like, come on, dude. All judges in the family, who makes the decisions in that house if two judges are married to each other? They need a tiebreaker, you know? Yeah, they need to, ha- uh, they need to have an open marriage. To, they need to bring in a third judge. Judge help- Deneen P. Rowe. There yeah, you they need a third judge. Who was the judge when you went on divorce court? Abilene, uh, Maybelline Ephraim. I think it was Maybelline. It was it was before the newer host took over. She had glasses, right? I watched the episode. Uh, Uh, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Maybelline was amazing. She was close to retiring Uh, when I was on that episode, which is here on the channel. If you want to see me on divorce courts, (laughs) uh, she uh, the producer said, "Hey, man, this don't usually happen, but the judge would like to see you in her chambers." Her chambers was an office that was just like the set, no ceiling, you know, and walls that were like that thin <laughs> that's supposed to look yeah. like an office wall. Uh, but she said some nice things about me, told me that, you know, hang in there, you're going to find the right person, and you're going to be an amazing dad someday, I can tell. Uh, and and I'm eternally grateful for uh, her taking the time to talk to me. Uh, that was a tough situation. Uh, the boxing thing... Uh, uh, we were doing a wrestling show, Alex, uh, probably 2006, 2007, and uh, our we had a special guest referee that night. It was this, I cannot remember his name, I'd have to look it up, like every referee ever in professional boxing to see a name that would trigger it for me, but he's a uh, ref like big time pay-per-view boxing matches and stuff, so he was kind of a big deal as far as the referee community goes. Okay. And I shit you not, <clears throat> he told me one of the reasons, and this is like information from him to me. This is not me saying this. I have no proof to back this up. From God's I, mouth to, to your ears. Exactly. And I, I've thought this about the Super Bowl and stuff too before. He told me, that wrestling isn't that different from pro boxing, like the pay-per-view boxing. He says more matches in pro boxing than you can imagine are fixed. They know they are told how many uh, rounds they're going to go, when to end it, and sometimes who's going over. Because it's not always about the fight, it's about the money. And if everybody went in there and knocked each other out in the first couple seconds... They'd have a shit pay-per-view, uh, which does happen sometimes. But this pro boxer referee told us, you know, he, he didn't, like, have a disdain for our sport just because we weren't, you know, getting out there and really fighting like boxers. And he's like, oh, they really fight. But, uh, you know, the big money ones and stuff, a lot of the time, those are just as rigged as uh, wrestling is. And he sat there and gave us examples and stuff. And that blew my mind and got me wondering, like, if uh, Super Bowls and stuff like that, you know, for merch sales. Because everybody gets paid good. And, it, like, in a, in a boxing match, if you're on the pay-per-view, like the big pay-per-view, even if you go down, you're still getting paid. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> uh, so, I don't know. It's possible. But that, that was a professional referee at that point in his life had been in the business for, like, 40 years. I don't even know if he's still with us anymore. Uh, but he didn't sound like he was lying. Uh, I don't usually talk this much during sports. I'm sorry. But I thought you'd okay. find that interesting. Well, um, you're, so. you're, you're not saying anything that's new to me. Because I'm. there are definitely uh, documented cases of, of fights being thrown. Um, if you go back and look at the Muhammad Ali and Sonny Liston fight back in the 60s. Um, Ali, when, he, when, he, when his name was Cassius Clay... Uh, knocks out Sonny Liston. Um, if you go back and look at that fight, I don't even know that Muhammad Ali makes contact. Um, Sonny Liston was Sonny Liston was an enforcer for the mafia at the time. He wasn't just a boxer, so he had he had deep deep connections to the mafia. And Sonny Liston actually was murdered early on in life. Um, I think Sonny Liston took a fall. 
Um, and Pete Rose was the manager of the Reds when he was betting on the sports books. Uh, uh, you know, he was betting on the Reds, but he was the one managing the Reds. So that's documented. Um, there's a referee for the NBA named Tim Donaghy. There's a special on, I believe it's Netflix right now. Uh, it just, it just became available. Um, he was on the take for the mafia. He was provide, he was making calls that influenced the game. So I think you're a hundred percent correct. I think there are so many contests or boxing matches that you think back on fondly that were probably just bullshit. Yeah. Like when, when soda Popinski beat little Mac, yeah, soda pop. <laughs> that 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 blew my mind. King Hippo beating Little Mac was a little more believable. Soda Pop Pinsky's oh. real name, I think, was supposed to be like Ivan von uh, Vodka something, but they yeah. changed it. Yeah, they changed it because you know they wanted little kids to not drink vodka. Uh, yeah, drink vodka. Dude, we um, had candy camels and candy Marlboros whenever I was little. Do you remember those? I I didn't. They didn't have the name brands, but they definitely had candy cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Josh, here's another sports story, and this is terrible, terrible news for the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens mascot, Poe, so he's a big bird, he looks like a big old raven, suffered a a season-ending knee injury during last week's preseason game versus the Washington Commanders, the team announced. So Poe, the Ravens mascot, uh, tore his knee apart, and he is going to be out for the season, so the the Ravens are not going to have a mascot for this year because he's out. Raven gave the even flow wrong. Tore his, tore his knee. The Raven, the Raven <laughs> Poe will not be at the games. Never more. Never more. <laughs> I do like that. I, I didn't know that, that the name of the uh, mascot was Poe. I love that. I actually, I dig that, that the Ravens uh, sponsor is Poe. That's something I learned today. Uh, I thought that you. was the photos of the mascot being injured and being carried off the field, he's still got the head on, are hilarious. Um, it's just hilarious. To see. I don't know. It's ridiculous. He's, like, being carted out, like, in full mascot regalia. Whoever, um, heard, him, whoever heard him is, like, every night slowly hearing, you know, like a thumping heart, you know? Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. They're, they're never going to be able to live it down. Um Last sports story of the episode. Boston Celtics player Grant Williams recently tweeted uh, at Warriors superstar Steph Curry, I wore 30 in high school because of you, and I'm not wearing a championship ring because of you. Uh, so, the you know, the Celtics lost to the Warriors in the NBA Finals, the most recent NBA Finals, and I just thought that was kind of funny. Uh, just a really quick hit right there. Ste- I no no idea what Steph Curry tweeted back. Probably doesn't give a shit. Uh, probably <laughs> right. The, breaking news: Steph Curry does not care what Grant Williams thinks about stopping him from getting a championship. Full circle of Harrison Ford and Tommy Lee Jones. I don't care. <clears throat> Speak- hey, speaking of Harrison Ford, before we get into Slash Tracks Wrestling, um, short round was recently photographed with Harrison Ford at a. I don't know if it was a convention or a premiere or something, but Harrison Ford was like showing the new, new unseen footage of uh, Indiana Jones five. Yeah. And the, the person who played short round and who was also data in the Goonies, who's had a career resurgence, by the way, um, was at the same event and he's 51 years old, by the way, short round is 51 and they had a little reunion at the event and they took a photo. It's all over the internet. Uh, they both have the biggest smiles on their face. I just thought it was really interesting to see that photo and to realize that Short Round is now 51. That was cool to see. And I knew that uh, Indiana Jones 5 was uh, made, you know. I knew it was happening. I didn't know it was, like, already finished um, until you sent me that picture and I, and I looked it up. And I watched the little teaser trailer. I sent you a link to it, too. Yeah. Uh, they showed, like, no clips in the teaser uh, from Indiana Jones 4, like, when it's talking about his, fa- his past uh, heroics. The video goes on to show clips from part, fa- from part 4, but it's just while the person's talking about the leaked picture of Indiana Jones on a bridge. But the actual teaser, like, showed clips from the first three. And I'm like, come on, okay, I get it. Some people, their tastes isn't that great and they don't like part four but i love part four i love that they 
they they made the uh, mystical item, you know, uh, interdimensional or extraterrestrial instead of just a religious artifact because I kind of loop them all together. And I'm curious to see what is going to get an 81-year-old Indiana Jones back out there. Uh, the plot has been kept under wraps. Uh, well, you have any thoughts on what it's going to be? This will be the 60s. Probably chasing down the Fountain of Youth so they can make a part six. So <laughs> well, he's not gonna, dead uh, before the next one. It's going to be old. It's going to be in the 60s because the last one took place in the 50s. So, I mean, that's that's a, a lot of stuff went down in that decade. Uh, so maybe we'll see Indiana Jones go into the moon. I mean, in, uh, okay. in the script for Forrest Gump, uh, not the script, but the novel that uh, Forrest Gump is based on. Yeah, he goes to watch the 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 first uh, at Buzz Buzz and them going to the moon, and he's trying to find a bathroom, and he ends up looking out of a porthole, uh, you know, when the countdown's happening, waving at the crowd outside. Uh, he he looking for a bathroom, ends up in the shuttle and goes to the moon. Uh, Forrest Gump does. <laughs> In the book, not the movie, but yeah. So he ends up going to the moon in the book because he drank too many Dr. Peppers because he's trying yeah. to look for a bathroom. Yeah. He had to pay. Buzz Aldrin, I gotta pay. I believe Mama he just said, said he had to pay. Uh. Mama said they was my magic shoes. They take me anywhere, including outer space. I don't know. Hey, uh, let's get into Slash Tracks Wrestling. Let's do it. Lock it uh, up. Last week, 27 years ago, or it might have even been two weeks ago at this point, because I, I wrote the rundown a little bit ago. So 27 years ago, the debut episode of WCW Monday Nitro aired from the Mall of America in Minneapolis. Do you remember that, Josh? Oh, yeah. It was crazy. Luger was everybody, because, like, WWF taped their stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was like when um, Rick Rude showed up on WCW and WWF. I don't think that... Uh, Lex was on Raw that night, but they still had footage to air of him because uh, they recorded like two or three shows ahead of time. Yeah, and Nitro for him was to live. Walk out on, huh? Nitro was live and Raw was taped. Yeah, and Luger comes walking out, man. That was a, that was a big deal. Uh, the whole the Hulk Hogan getting attacked. Uh, by the Dungeon of, Dungeon Legion of Doom, Dungeon of Doom. <laughs> And uh, it sounds like the villains from the like the DC universe, you know, the Dungeon of Doom or whatever, the League of Doom. Luger, uh, Luger showing up was a big deal because he he was under he wasn't even under contract with WWE at the end of his run there. He kept putting off Bruce Prichard in the front office. He's like, I'll sign later, I'll sign later, and they were going to sign him to like three hundred fifty, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars. He wanted out of WWE so bad that he contacted Sting to get a hold of Eric Bischoff yeah. and signed for like $150,000 just to get out of WWE. Like he, he wanted out because by the end of his run, he was in the Allied Powers with the British Bulldog. He wasn't even in the main event. He was doing nothing. He was jerking yeah. the curtain. They were just opening the show. Um, that gimmick that they tried to give him, the Hulk Hogan light gimmick, didn't work. Once he... Once he wrestled Yokozuna at SummerSlam 93 for the belt, didn't win it, but he won by countout and celebrated like he won the belt. Yeah. That was it. That was the end of Lex Luger. You His could push, tell they, they, lost, was over. they lost their faith in him by changing to the countout. It was obvious. Yeah, they did uh, that on purpose. It's so funny that um, two things are kind of funny. The first one is, they had to, like, finish airing whatever he had left recorded with WWE. So I think while he was in WCW, a couple, like, weekend episodes of whatever the WWF put out on the weekend back then. Super, superstars. Yeah, like, they had to show Lex Luger fights on there while he just did what he did. Uh, and uh, the other thing about Lex Luger just totally slipped my mind, man, and it's going to drive me nuts. Uh, time out for just a second. Um Oh my god. Shit. You're talking about when Lex Luger took shit? 
Lex is gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna shit. It was funny that he had to, uh, that they had to finish showing his stuff. Yeah. Okay, I got it, I got it. And it's also funny that when Hogan was clearing out House in the ring uh, yeah. from the Dungeon of Doom that night or whatever they were called, Lex Luger came to help, you know, and you end up with this thing that Hogan did with, like, every wrestler he ever feuded with. They're fighting off people, their backs bump into each other, and they turn around and the fist goes up, you know? Yeah. And that was like the Hogan... That was the that was like straight out of the Hogan playbook. Uh, I think he did that in WCW at least twenty times. Him and Warrior you know. did that in the Royal Rumble, like ninety one, to set up their feud. Or it might have even been Royal Rumble ninety to set up the feud for WrestleMania six. Like him and Warrior bump backs, then they do a like crisscross applesauce for some reason <laughs> on the ropes. I don't know why wrestlers do that spot. It's so stupid. Um, the Hell crisscross. They tried to copy that again in Halloween Havoc, and their timing was so bad because the warrior was so blown up. <laughs> I hate it. I hate that crisscross bullshit. It just, I want, I want my wrestling to be hard hitting and kind of like based in reality. If you start doing crisscross shit, I know you're working together. So exactly. get that out of the match. The ropes won't it. stop throwing me. Help yeah, me, somebody. It's like Dude. the sling. It's like the slingshot. I hate that one too. Oh, the momentum. Oh. Just sat down on him. Uh, Luger and Brett going out at the Royal Rumble at the same time and landing. Yeah. That was a really cool way to book it. And then, uh, you know, art, uh, what does it say? Art imitates reality or whatever. Yeah. Or, Or reality imitates art, sorry. Art imitates life. Yeah, and Batista and John Cena weren't supposed to do that, you know. And they went out at the same time, and uh, it was so fucked up that night at that Royal Rumble, uh, I think it was like 2007 or eight or something, or maybe a little bit sooner, Vince, that's the night Vince McMahon had to come to the ring, and, and blew he was his so quads pissed out. that he tore his quads. Yeah, he blew his quads out. Um, Vince McMahon comes down, blows his quads <laughs> out in the ring, and he's like, before he blew his quads out, he was going to announce like... God damn it, now Batista's going to have to wrestle Yokozuna, and then <laughs> Cena's going to have to wrestle Owen, and then whoever wins that, god damn it's going to wrestle so-and-so in the main event. We're going to get wrestle shit and talk. <laughs> oh, what a rush. Um, oh, Josh. what a dump. <laughs> hey, Josh, on August 29th, 30 years ago, the British Bulldog defeated Bret Hart at SummerSlam 92 at Wembley Stadium to win the Intercontinental title. Do you remember that pay-per-view? You know, actually, I do. I, I've seen it, but I don't remember that. I, I, for some reason, completely forgot that the Bulldog won the IC title, honestly. I thought all he ever held was the European title and the tag titles. He won the IC belt uh, at Wembley Stadium against Bret uh, at SummerSlam. And then he eventually dropped it, like, I want to say not very long after to Shawn Michaels. Um, Brett, Brett carried Bulldog in that match. Uh, Brett says in his book that I've read that Bulldog was not sleeping uh, for weeks before the match. He was uh, doing drugs like Coke and whatever else, meth, whatever, before the match. So... Uh, British Bulldog what like was forgetting spots in the match. Like there's a part where they both go out over the ropes and Brett basically saves Bulldog's life. Because Bulldog was gonna like face plant or head plant outside and Brett like kinda falls with him but like twists in the air and lands with him in a way that he basically saved British Bulldog's life. Uh and then put him over. Then put this guy over. Yeah, is that is that is that the night where uh, Brett was going to dive over the top rope and cross body the bulldog, but the bulldog was like bending down to tie his boot, so Brett like hooked his head on the way down and pulled him down. It's like I a neck breaker. It, that's what it was, but I don't remember bulldog tying his boot. But I just remember bulldog not being ready at all. And yeah, it would have hurt both happened. of them. It would have hurt both of them if he hadn't. If Brett, if Brett hadn't thought quickly. Uh, 
they would have both got hurt because it would have slammed Davy Boy's face. Yeah, he would have been fucked up. Brett would have got done worse than break a couple ribs, uh, you know, like he had done before. So, uh, yeah. and it's funny you mentioned Warrior and injuries, man. Uh, Warrior is the reason that Davy Boy, you know, his career was pretty much finished. Well, um, yes, yes, and no because of that trap door in WCW where Warrior made his entrance at that WCW pay per view because they didn't Bulldog didn't even know that trap door was in the middle of the ring and he got like body slammed on that door yeah. and it like basically caused the infection or the injury that led to Davy boys like eventual downfall. Yeah. But Davy boy had been doing so many things in his life that led up to that. And even after that, you can't blame warrior for the decisions that Davy boy made, but did it help? No, it did not yeah. help. I that don't, I don't even blame the warrior mm-hmm. for, what I meant was uh, uh, his injury was tied to the Warrior. Yes, uh, and you should blame, the, dude, yeah. blame Bischoff and WCW Creative. They're the ones who were going for Warrior being in the mirror of Hogan's mirror and like all the smoke and uh, <laughs> razzle dazzle and all that bullshit. They should have just had Warrior come out to his music, kick the shit out of people, right? Yeah, he, we don't need to see Hogan lip quivering in the mirror when the Warrior's like, and the Warrior's like. <laughs> The warrior himself, here he is, right there. <gasps> the warrior had rabies. That's what was happening, and he was in there yeah. having uncontrollable <laughs> orgasms. That'd be hard to wear your tights in front of the in front of a crowd if you're constantly <laughs> having orgasms in the middle of your matches, dude. Let me see that shirt one more time. I think I've got that one. Yes, I have that exact same shirt. It's a good uh, shirt. Great, it great minds think alike. It doesn't have Hogan <clears throat> on it though, because it costs too much money. Uh, it takes too much money away from WWE to put Hogan on stuff. So, like, I have a WrestleMania six and like a WrestleMania seven or but five. No Hogan, no Hogan I, on either. Yeah, no Hogan. The whole card, Roddy Piper, everybody, no Hogan. <laughs> Just Hogan sees. Else. Hogan sees the shirt design. That doesn't work for me, brother. <laughs> um. One last thing to say about the pay-per-view in 92. Uh, that show, that SummerSlam at Wembley Stadium, that was the last appearance for the Legion of Doom before Hawk like, lost his mind and left the Road Warriors. Uh, so they didn't reform again until WCW like four years later. So that was, they went against, uh, are they, I can't remember if they wrestled uh, Money, Inc. or if they wrestled the Natural Disasters, but... They had their match, rode off on their Harleys, and you didn't see him again for four years. That because Hawk just lost his mind. And then, you know, shit flushed his career down the toilet. Yeah. Um, you know the other member. Uh, and Draws got hurt. Draws got Draws hurt. Got shit hurt. flushed his career down the toilet. And then the Animal was the only one that had his shit together. Two thousand one, WCW. Right before. The, I'm sorry. I know we said we weren't going to like have you know longer shows, but. Uh, WCW at the end. I remember because I, I told you I supported it even through the Russo reboot and everything. Not me. I was, I was done at that point. I was trying. The in <laughs> in January two thousand one, they had a pay per view called Sin, and that was like one the, of their last ones. Yeah, and they yeah. were going to unveil a mystery man that was helping the bad guys or whatever. And they built it up like this guy was a big star. So I was thinking, Macho Man, like he didn't he he showed up on Thunder, and then you never saw him again in that angle. Like he showed up once on like two thousand. So I was thinking, Macho Man, or wow, did they work something out? Is Hogan going to come back? No, no. The Mystery Man comes out and attacks, and the huge wrestler they got for the Mystery Man was none other than Animal. Wearing like uh, a black jumpsuit with like uh, athletic tape and a X on his shirt and a black helmet or something, and it's like I don't did did you guys even have somebody picked for this or did you just like write yourself into a corner and say okay we got to unveil a mystery guy tonight who do we got can we get Hogan no is Warrior done yeah he's done what about Macho Man no. What about uh, fucking Alex Wright? No. <laughs> what about Jericho? No, he's in WWF now. Uh, how about Festus, uh, Jericho's security guard? 
No, what he's not shit? available. Can we get shit? <laughs> what about the Renegade? Uh, the Ultimate Warrior ripoff. What about the Disciple? Can we get Brutus, the Booty Man himself? <laughs> Brutus Beefcake. No, we're going to get fucking Animal, not even in his Road Warriors gear. <laughs> Dude, it was like a Four Seasons uh, lawn care moment. They thought they were getting George the Animal still, you know, and they yeah. got Animal. <laughs> Dude, they're like, it's either going to be Animal or it's going to be Disco Inferno. So <laughs> we're going to go with Animal. Hey, let's get into the last wrestling story of the episode. All right, let's do it. All right, so this is huge news. Uh, we haven't done a show in a couple weeks, so we haven't been able to talk about it. Uh, CM Punk recently went off the rails in a media scrum uh, following an AEW, AEW pay-per-view. So CM Punk had just defeated uh, the former Dean Ambrose in AEW for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. And during the media scrum, after the pay-per-view's over, CM Punk was sitting next to Tony Khan, the owner of AEW. And he decided to drop another pipe bomb and completely go off script right next to the owner. So instead of setting up his feud with MJF, he decided to address Colt Cabana, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Hangman Adam Page. So, Hangman Adam Page was the man that CM Punk originally won his first AEW title from. And apparently, Hangman Page had said something on screen about CM Punk not being the same person on screen uh, as he is uh, behind the scenes off screen. So, CM Punk is basically portraying himself as, I help the the younger guys, and I'm here to help people learn, blah, blah, blah. But uh, Hangman Page is saying that's not the case. Uh, CM Punk's full shit and Hangman Page wasn't even supposed to be really talking about CM Punk because they they didn't have a a program anymore they weren't working each other Mm -hmm. anymore so CM Punk took umbrage to that and addressed that during the media scrum and said that uh, Hangman Page uh, didn't want to take advice from veterans and he was an idiot blah 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 so he goes off on Hangman Page but then uh, Colt Cabana who his former friend who he was famously on Colt Cabana's podcast when he left WWE yeah. back in like 2014, 2015. Uh, they're not friends anymore. They've been to court. They they like had a lawsuit against each other because CM Punk like uh, said that the WWE's doctor was uh, not taking care of CM Punk's body correctly. There was like a misconduct lawsuit. Like just yeah. a bunch of just a bunch of stuff. Like Punk had a staff infection. And he basically said WWE's doctor wasn't uh, on the level with him. So they they were suing each other. But anyway, Bill's Colt Cabana... Him. Yeah, CM Punk and Colt Cabana are not friends anymore. Uh, CM Punk goes off during the media scrum, uh, not just about Hangman Page. He starts talking about Colt Cabana. Because Colt Cabana got moved from AEW's main, main roster to Ring of Honor. And he basically said, I don't like Colt Cabana. I'm not friends with Colt Cabana. I think it's ridiculous that people are even asking me about Colt Cabana. Um, I want nothing to do with him. So he's talking about Colt Cabana when he's supposed to be talking about MJF, who he's going to have a a pay-per-view match with in the future. Uh, Nobody brought up Colt Cabana. He's not even in AEW anymore. Uh, Tony Khan looked extremely uncomfortable. Uh, And then this is where Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks get involved. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks are AEW talent. They're big-time talent. They helped create AEW with Tony Khan. They are not just wrestlers, Josh. They are also vice presidents. So they're EVPs. They're not so. And you know this: wrestling talent are usually not EVPs. They're either one or the other because it can get muddled. They can go into business for themselves. Same with the promoter's son wrestling for the promotion. Yeah, Shane. Shane McMahon. So. Basically, what happened is CM Punk called out the Colt Cabana stuff. He calls out Hangman Page, but he also starts calling out Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks, claiming that they were leaking information to the dirt sheets and saying behind CM Punk's back that basically uh, saying that CM Punk was the reason that Colt Cabana was moved to Ring of Honor because he doesn't like Colt Cabana. So he called them idiots. uh, Like, I think he called them dipshits. And he said, you know, if you got an issue with me or the way things are done or whatever, meet me. Uh, in my locker room, and we'll discuss it. And they did, so, right? So they met him in the locker room, and they basically forced their way into his locker room. 
uh, after the media scrum. And I, there's reports that they kicked the door in. There's reports that they forced their way in with a shoulder. Whatever happened, they went into CM Punk's locker room. A fight broke out. CM Punk punched one of the Young Bucks in the face twice. Uh, CM Punk was friends with another wrestler who was watching CM Punk's dog in CM <laughs> Punk's dressing room. Yeah. That that guy uh, punched and bit Kenny Omega, right? Wow. So he's defending CM Punk and CM Punk's dog. And <laughs> so the fight breaks out. It ends up, you know, people are getting bit. Dogs are all barking. There's just shit going down. Somewhere along the way, CM Punk ripped his tricep. So CM Punk is out for six to eight months. Uh, the Young Bucks are suspended. Kenny Omega's suspended. I think the other guy that w- was defending CM Punk, who's a wrestler, is suspended. CM Punk, I believe, is suspended. And CM Punk might not even come back because of, like, the drama that, that's happened. It's a mess, Josh. It's a fucking Did, mess. Didn't CM Punk get injured a couple months back? Yes. He broke it. He, like, basically shattered his foot into a jigsaw puzzle. His foot is held together with, like, screws and metal pieces, dude. Man, maybe he stepped away from the business just a little too long, <clears throat> you know, because it, it moves so much faster these days than it did uh, back in the 80s and 90s. Go back and watch, in, like, uh, on the network, it, like, matches we call great. Yeah. And, like, 30% of the matches, like, punches and stomps. Um, and there's so many high spots now, it's crazy. And there, and people get hurt so much more often. Um, Tony Khan... Also, man, uh, I saw a clip where, where where Chris Jericho told Tony Khan what was going on in the locker room, or vice versa, and Chris Jericho gets up to go uh, help handle the situation. Mm-hmm. Apparently, he's kind of like the uh, locker room leader, like Taker is. Yeah, I was going to say, like Undertaker. Yeah, and there's also an audio thing of, uh, and I want to get into this next episode, uh, if you do you have a pencil, you can make a note or something. Um, Tony Khan put out a statement against WWE about how they're like he's not trying to compete with them head on head. You know, he he understands they have two different types of products, but WWE is like maliciously trying to counter program him, trying to shut him down. And dude, he drops f bombs and everything. Yeah, saying but, I ain't fucking going anywhere. It's you that's ridiculous. It. That is ridiculous that Tony Khan, Tony Khan was pissed off that <clears throat> WWE decided to run a pay-per-view during the same weekend that Tony Khan did. I think it's I think it's extremely naive of Tony Khan to think that WWE is not going to try to compete and to take uh, eyeballs and viewers away from his product. Um, and I he also think to it's, do the same. Yeah, yeah. it's ri- it's ridiculous. I think Tony Khan needs to focus on his own shit. Uh, and and not worry about what WWE is doing. Of course, they're going to do that. They're competing for the same market uh, market share. Um, Tony Khan, WWE wasn't saying anything publicly when Tony Khan was signing all WWE's former talent. It's just like, ridiculous. We, it's we have an opportunity for another golden age in wrestling, like another great age, if we can. Because especially with Triple H and Shawn Michaels, that's what I was going to say next time. Because it's a long discussion. One word could trigger a long discussion that would stretch this episode out even longer. And that word is a tweet that says wrestling. And that's from Triple H. Yeah. And that's something I wanted to touch on uh, in the next episode. Uh, But Tony Khan should embrace the competition because that's what made wrestling so great in the 90s. And we have a chance for that again. Um, that that was my last statement uh, on that for this episode. I agree with you 100%. And I also think it's extremely exciting that Triple H has brought wrestling, the term wrestling, back to the WWE. Because as much as Vince McMahon uh, propelled his company forward to be an entertainment company, they lost a lot of what made that company great. So it's wrestling. It is, it's not a dirty word. I watch the WWE oh. because I want to see wrestling. I don't want to tune into a three-hour Raw and see 17 minutes of actual in-ring competition. There I don't need. Go. I don't. If I want to watch soap operas, I'll sit down and watch Lifetime with my girlfriend Nicole for the next three hours. I'm I'm good. I want to see some wrestling. Trash tracks. Yeah, trash <laughs> tracks. Hopefully, we'll do that at some point. And also, 
Um, the last thing I want to say about the Tony Khan CM Punk thing, I think I'm going to wrap it up in a tiny, a tight bow, a nice tidy bow here. Uh, EVPs should not be wrestlers. So Tony Khan needs to look into removing their EVP uh, title because, and also EVP should not be uh, barging into talent's doors and starting fistfights, number one. So CM Punk was defending himself, okay? Yeah. Number two, CM Punk should not have went into business for himself next to the owner of the company. Tony, Tony Khan even tried to defuse the situation, and CM Punk just kind of shushed him and kept talking. To, CM Punk is wrong for that. Uh, that's not a respectful thing to do for your employer. And also, uh, I think it's time, like you said, CM Punk needs to take a good hard look in the mirror and decide if he can even physically do this anymore. Yeah. Because if he's had three matches in the last like four months and he's been seriously injured in two of them, I think the writing's on the wall. Especially when Sting's doing better than he is at not getting injured. Sting is uh, doing dives from the freaking balcony and not getting injured. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on, dude. But I will say, Tony Khan, uh, my last comment, and uh, I guess horror news follows, is you can't order the hottest hot wing and, uh, you know, get a little upset uh, when it burns your tongue. Uh, you hired CM Punk, and man... You got CM Punk, so yeah, he's, ha, he, good luck. <laughs> historically, he he is a shit starter, and he thinks he's the best, and he believes he's the best. And you know what? To to be as good as he has been historically in his career, and to be as good as he is on the mic, you have to have swagger, and you have to believe in your own publicity. But at the same time, that attitude can cause a lot of problems with a lot of other people. Um, let's get into horror and spooky news, Josh. Okay. Can we do a channel drop on the horror and spooky news section? Yeah. Um, the newest book that I've started narrating on the channel is not a book that you buy in stores or one that's out of print, per se. It is a fan novel, and it's looking like it's going to be very interesting. It's not Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash, the comic book. It is a novel by, by A.S. Eggleston called Freddy vs. Ash. It's Freddy, uh, it's after J him and Jason have their fight, they're back in hell, and he realizes that plan didn't work, so he instead of turning to Jason this time, he's going to turn his attention to the Necronomicon, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this book plays out, and if you're interested, I'll be dropping chapters on the channel every week or two, so keep an eye out for that. That's exciting. Uh, anything Freddy related, I'm in. That's how, dude. That's how I found. That's how I found you in the first place. I just randomly uh, looked for Freddy Krueger audiobooks, and I found you. That's how I found you. Well, you've um, got every single one ever written except for one. I still got. I still got to do the official ones. I still got to do Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror Part One. Uh, but I've done every other Freddy book ever written. Every Jason. All the official ones are done. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, speaking of Wes Craven IP, intellectual property, let's talk about another Wes Craven uh, uh, project. That okay. well, that's something that Wes Craven was involved with, but you know, Wes Craven's not with us anymore. Uh, Scream, yeah, no, no. <laughs> Scream Six recently wrapped filming. The oh movie, my god! The movie releases on March thirty first, two thousand twenty three, in theaters. Josh, how excited are you for Scream 6, buddy? I, I might not even watch this one. No, you're going to because I'm going to buy it. I'm going to send you the digital copy again, <laughs> you freaking puke. Man, after that little bitty tiny girl was some able, somehow able to eviscerate Dewey, like a knife in the front, knife in the back, and like all the way up. Field, and field dress his ass from groin to, start, <laughs> groin to throat. And I could tell in the scene that the the boy the boy that guy was the killer because Ghostface didn't even try to kill him. Then he gets in an elevator, and yeah. Dewey gets a phone call from the yeah. girl's phone in the elevator. I'm like, okay, this, well, I know who the killer is now. This, that's when but, when he was in the elevator, and he's like, "Why are you going back? You stay in the elevator." That's when I knew. I was like, "Okay, he's the killer." Okay, check, got it. Um, am I excited for Scream 6? 
No. Do I think it should even be made this quick? No. Um, Nev Campbell's not even in the film, so I'm not excited about that. Dewey's Reboot it. Dewey's mm-hmm. dead. Hey, Dewey's dead. My favorite character in the franchise. Um, so I'm not excited about that. Uh, the movie apparently is going to be in the city. I think it's going to be in a big city. I think maybe even New York. I think it's like a Jason Voorhees takes Manhattan situation. <laughs> is he going to be on um, a cruise ship? The whole movie? Uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Scrap. <laughs> Ghost face on a cruise ship. Um, am I excited for any of that stuff? No. Will I watch it opening night? Yes. <laughs> I will. Take my money. I'm fine. I, I don't care. I, I'll i go. I'm fine. I think what would do Scream good is what would do Saw good. To end what, the franchise? Saw, just end it? Saw good. By the end way, better, better Call Saul ended... In my opinion, even better than Breaking Bad's amazing ending, but that's another topic for another day. Yeah. But Scream Scream Six should go the route of like the last Jigsaw movie, which Book was uh, Spiral. Book and of Saw, that's, huh? Like the Book of Saw. Yeah, like like instead of connecting to the past movies of Scream, maybe like a cult of ghost faces are popping up around the country. Yeah. You know? That would be terrifying. That would be a new spin on it. And you don't need the legacy characters for that to succeed. Uh, just like you didn't with Spiral. Spiral was a really good movie. It could have worked if they didn't connect it to the uh, Saw movies. But I was really intrigued by the idea that the work John did spread to other people. That saw corruption and stuff. <clears throat> and I think that would be... Um, It'd be pretty cool to see a cult of ghost faces popping up around the country uh, in future movies. That would intrigue me. I agree with you. They don't need to have legacy characters anymore. As a matter of fact, I think Gale being the only legacy character at this point, of the three, it's kind of like whatever, and Crystal Clear Pepsi is officially done, uh, just like Scream 6 should end the franchise uh, on. No, I was going to say, Gale is my least favorite of the three OG characters, and... I can't see how she doesn't get slaughtered in this film. Um, how does she, she not die in this film? She should have been the one to die, not Dewey. And and, and and the reason I said that, and this is probably the tenth time I've said it on the show, she's the only character that has not grown one bit since the first movie. Her, her character hasn't grown. She's been through all this and still... Power hungry, money hungry, fame hungry. Um, she changed a little bit um, in four... Like, she actually kind of turned around to where she was, like, happy for Sydney's success with the book. But she took a major step backwards in part five, I guess. She just let Dewey leave her and she, while she's pursuing her career again. I thought she, like, changed in four. So It's almost like five skipped two, three, and four. Uh, yeah, you know? without telling the audience. They're like, yeah. don't even pay attention. Um, before we end this little story right here, you know how you were talking about a cult of uh, ghost faces? I always thought, and this is about Freddy, um, I always thought it would have been really cool if they would have actually did something with the Fredheads. Like the cult of Fredheads that resurrect Freddy, and that's how he gets his, his big yeah. resurrection. Um, they, could, they could still do that. Um, they could just, ha- like if Robert England decided he was going to do another film, he was going to do one more, they could resurrect him. They could just pick up right after the events of Freddy's Dead, 10, 20 years later, and the Fredheads... Uh, resurrect him, and then all hell breaks loose, and that's how they start again. Um, There's enough CGI. They w- he would not have to do the stunts he did in Freddy vs. Jason. No, that's... Hold off. That's Robert England just posturing. It's almost like he's... Um, that's almost his way of, like, negotiating, I think. Oh, I can't do it. I'm not... I can't do it. But if you pay me enough, bitch, like, I might do it, but physically I can't do it. I'm not Give into it. The but, money. Yeah, it's like Jerry Maguire. Like Robert England just wants some money. Uh, Welcome to Cash App, bitch. Yeah, wait. Freddie does accept Venmo, bitch. Uh, <laughs> all right. St- story number two of spooky news. This is a weird one. Uh, do you remember the movie Bring It On, the cheerleading movie? Yes. Sadly. Okay, Kristen Dunst. Okay, so bring, bring it on. Cheer or die. Uh, is a movie that's coming out. It's part of the official Bring It On franchise. A cheer squad's plan to have a secret practice at a nearby abandoned chute 
uh, or, or nearby abandoned school on Halloween takes a terrifying turn. So bring it on, cheer or die in the bring it on universe, official universe is happening. I feel like some girl's older brother, whenever he was a teenager, said, I'm going to film school, and I'm going to ruin this movie series for you, because you made me watch all of these, bitch. And, uh... I'm going to say, I believe David Bergantino is uh, one of the people that helped write the Fredhead script, by the way, that whole story uh, for, for uh, Freddy vs. Jason, so... Good! Then we we got to ask him about that. Tracks. Yeah, uh, but, but, yeah, I think, uh... It's a, you gonna I, watch that movie? I, 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 I'm, I'll, I'm, I will watch it to see them kill the series. I think that's what this is about. I think they're trying to kill the series. Uh, all the little girls and teenagers that have been following Bring It On are going to be uh, a little surprised if they don't watch any trailers or anything ahead of time. Dude, you I know. haven't even seen a Bring It On movie, like, aside from the first one, and I think I saw the second one that came out, but by the time they got to part two in, like, 2003, it was already a straight-to-like Redbox presentation. Um, I wasn't aware that the universe still existed, to be honest with you, in 2022, and this seems like a lifetime uh, production. I, I can't see how this could possibly go to theaters. I like the Sugar and Spice cheerleader movie. That one was pretty cool. Like they robbed something. Or, I can't remember what they They're did. They're bank robbers. It's like yeah. Point Break almost. Yeah. That was that was a good cheerleader flick. Um, the, gir- the girl, the, what is, so she plays. Uh, Pensatucky. Uh, she's blonde. She was in Bubble Boy. She's in the Scream movies. She's uh, Deputy Judy. She's oh, in yeah. that movie. She is okay. gorgeous, by the way. She's been my one of my Hollywood crushes forever. I can't even think of her name right now, but. Um, yeah, she's in that Sugar and Spice, I think. And it's excellent, just for her alone. <laughs> it was a fun movie. That one was a fun movie. I had uh, I had a good time with that one. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, uh, Jason is getting a new official movie. They're moving ahead with that. Allegedly. 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 Uh, Ghostbusters 4 has a release date for next December. Okay. And uh, Dead by Daylight is introducing a licensed night killer, like a night in uh, a, a late like December, November, December. And the speculation at this point is because Ash was uh, put into the game as a survivor only. He didn't have like a chapter where it comes with a map, a survivor, and a killer. It was just play as Ash. Uh, there's a speculation that Evil Ash from Army of Darkness is going to be the new killer. That would be really cool, man. He'd be a hard character to deal with, too, because he's super erratic and very strong in that and, film. And they could give him, like, the Army of the Dead. Like, uh, in, in Dead by Daylight, if you play as Nemesis, you have zombies around the map that are AI-controlled that can attack uh, survivors. Yeah. I could see, like, the little skeletons, you know, from Army of Darkness. Yeah. Uh, running around the map, um, little tidbits, little little horror tidbits for you. Damn, dude, that's exciting. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming uh, up around the bend for horror, just for horror in general. Do you know what else is exciting? What's that? This. <laughs> What's that, Alex? Uh, Uncontrollable orgasms. Ugh, I've got rabies. Oh God, <laughs> it feels good. I never knew dying would be this nice. Uh, uh, there's a movie, Josh called Cocaine Bear, uh, and it's starring Kerry Russell, Ray Liotta, maybe in one of his last films ever because he's dead now, uh, Alden Aaron Reich, and, o- and O'Shea Jackson Jr., so Ice Cube's son. It's going to be released on February 24th, 2023, and the film follows a bear who ingests a large amount of cocaine and goes on a coke-fueled rampage. Cocaine Bear. Wait, are we talking about like a bear as in like an animal bear or the a bear. other? Okay, okay, because the other one would be a totally different movie. Yeah, not a, oh. not a, not a, not a, not like a gay uh, man who's large and hairy like a bear who took cocaine at a dance club. No, this okay. is a bear. Okay, yeah. Um, now, if they made it nuclear cocaine grizzly bear B or something, you know, it's like it's like they watched our show and took two of our stories. And just merged them. They took our cocaine bees and our nuclear <laughs> grizzlies and just 
then we got a movie. Nuclear grizzlies and cocaine bees mated and had <laughs> uncontrollable orgasms together to create cocaine bear. Cocaine bear. Hobo the, with the shotgun part two. Cocaine bear. In the farthest reaches of the deepest, darkest parts of the Necronomicon is the one spell you should never recite. The one that creates Donald Trump and cocaine bear. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, and if you're scoring at home, boys and girls, that's the second Trump reference of the episode. So you just hit the doubler, the the, the daily doubler for the slash tracks. Josh, are you going to go see Cocaine Bear, buddy? I don't know if I'll go see it, but I will watch it. I will watch it. I think I'll watch it, too. Um, and before we get into headlines, uh, the last segment of the show, I just saw the trailer for Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I haven't seen it yet. Okay, I was going to send it to you. I forgot to do it. Um, it's like just Pooh Bear going around, stalker style, just slicing people's heads off. No. Oh, it doesn't okay. really look that that innovative. Um, it's kind of disappointing. They could have done so much with that. It, I mean, it's, it is the trailer. Maybe they're just not revealing or showing their hand that much, but it just kind of looked whatever. I'm already not happy that they're doing that to Winnie the Pooh because he's like one of my favorite childhood memories. Um, I, th- I don't know if I've told this story. I had a Winnie the like growing up in the 80s like Josh and I did before Disney got their sank their teeth really into Winnie the Pooh. Uh, yeah. There were Winnie the Pooh stuffed animals, but they didn't even come with the red shirt. So when I was like <laughs> no. four, no. So when I was like four or five, I was like, Mom, I want a Winnie the Pooh with a red shirt. So my mom actually like sewed one for me, made one. So my Winnie the Pooh actually had like a legit red shirt my mom made for me. So, uh-huh. you know, you go from those great memories to like now he's murdering people. I don't know. <laughs> Some things probably shouldn't be uh, turned into horror uh, slashers, but I guess I'll still watch it, you know, but not really excited about it. And it kind of yeah. looks not innovative at all, but whatever. It sounds like they just had an idea. Like, what if what if Winnie the Pooh killed people? It's they... exact, dude. Yeah. It is a cash grab. As soon as the copyright was up, whoever, whatever dipshit is in charge of this production is the first one that got his hands on it. I promise you that's what happened. Oh, um, so if, if Disney doesn't get Mickey Mouse back, like we talked about in the previous show, <laughs> Mickey could be killing people soon, too. Oh, oh hey, oh, me and Pluto uh, want to discuss something with you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> they they start stabbing Eeyore and he's like, oh bother! <laughs> yeah, it just does not care. They no, they cut, they hack and slash at Eeyore, Eeyore, but instead of cutting his head off, they just cut his tail off because it's just tacked to his ass anyway. Or as they're killing him, he's like, thank you, I've wanted this for years and never had the guts. <laughs> yeah, you're doing me a favor. <laughs> All right, Josh, let's get into the last segment of the show, dude. Headlines. All uh, right, let's do it. All right, a VHS copy of the Garbage Pail Kids, the classic movie, Garbage Pail Kids movie, recently sold on eBay for $5,000. Oh, wow. It was a graded 8.5 mint in box sealed copy. So it sold for more recently on eBay than it probably made in its entire uh, time at the box office when it was first released. $5,000. We've been over this before. And I can't believe you, you, you're you so disheartened and you don't care and you didn't remember this, that I have a unrational or irrational, unnatural fear of Gumby mm-hmm. and the Garbage Pail Kids movie. They, for, there's something about those, those, like Gumby and that, that just feels, I'm not even religious at all. And, but it feels like demonic to me. Like mm-hmm. when I put it on, this like unease just comes over my entire body. And I'm not being comedic right now. Uh, I showed Beth. I put in. I, I tried starting up the Gumby movie to show her, and within like two seconds, I was like, I, "Oh my god, I can't!" Like it just terrifies me. And the same thing happened uh, with uh, the Garbage Pail Kids movie. But it might have just been because that one sucks so bad. I don't know. The yeah, Garbage Pail Kids movie, like, uh, didn't make sense on a lot of levels because they did... So, like, the Cabbage Patch Kids uh, sued the makers of the Garbage Pail Kids, so they couldn't even use the actual likeness that were on the cards for the film. So the the, the Garbage Pail Kids in the movie didn't really look like the cards. 
Um, and I just recently, yeah, they didn't at all. Did they, they ever get looked, cards since then? They, I think they've re-released some recently, or I, I don't quote me, I don't know, but I know it was stopped for a while. And I know that the Garbage Pail Kids also released a uh, ca- like a cartoon around that same time, but those also couldn't look like the cards. So um, the Garbage Pail Kids, just that movie was fucked from Jump Street because <laughs> it was written on a cocktail napkin at a happy hour at a, you know, Ramada in like an hour and a half. Um, the guy who wrote the movie wasn't a fan of the Garbage Pail Kids at all. He just kind of put out, he didn't even, he wasn't even really like familiar with the Garbage Pail Kids. I saw that in doing research for the story. So they had someone who wasn't a fan of the property and who didn't understand the property or know the background of the property make the film. And you also couldn't use the, what was actually making the product popular to begin with. So that movie was kind of just fucked from the beginning and it was a cash grab, but it ended up not making any money. So it just, (laughs) it was a cash grab that did not work. It's got kind of a cult following now. It reminds me of, like, yeah. Howard the Duck, in mm-hmm. a way. Um, God, just thinking of Gumby has me all creeped out right now. Um, but... Gar- Garbage Pail Kids does, did not have Leah Thompson's fine ass to save the film, though, so... <laughs> when, Sorry when about was, it. Whenever I was little, Alex, uh, you remember, like, when dolls or toys would come out with, like, a videotape? Yeah. Uh, and, okay... I used to watch My Pet Monster, the cartoon, on TV. Loved it. I had one. Loved it. Then I got the My Pet Monster doll with the cha- with the handcuff chains and stuff, and it came with a straight-to-video movie, which is like 55 minutes long, called My Pet Monster. Mm-hmm. And it's got live-action people. The little kid turns into a version of the monster that barely looks like the doll. But I had watched the show, and I loved B-Store. Beast or the villain, you know, if mm-hmm. he took his sunglasses off, it hurt his eyes. But for some reason, sunlight didn't hurt Monty's eyes, I think. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, at the end of the movie, the the mean old... Because uh, the, the kids go on a field trip uh, to uh, the museum, and they've got statues from ancient times. And you see one that looks like Beast or like a smaller version of a scary one, and then you have the good one, like from My Pet Monster, and the kid stares into its eyes, he turns into that, and then at the end of the movie, the mean guy stares into Beast Tour's eyes, and it ends with, like, light lighting up in his eyes like he's going to turn into him. I waited for, like, four years asking my mom to go pick up part two for me uh, because I wasn't under... I didn't know, as a little kid about how they would just do the promo movies and videos and stuff with toys. You didn't realize there wasn't going to be a sequel? Exactly. I thought thought it was going to be, you know, uh, more like a TV series. Like a Uh, whole universe built around My Pet Monster. Um, (laughs) Josh, the scariest part about My Pet Monster wasn't the fact that he was a monster. It was the fact that his nose looked just like a penis. Yes, that was... It looked uh, just like a cock. Uh, Yeah. as a kid, I didn't I didn't pick up on that as much, but yeah, it's it, yeah, especially the old toy. I got I got one of the remodels from two thousand three. It was supposed to look like it was like a retro throwback. Yeah, and it talked, and it's like, oh, you're really strong. How about a hug? And, I, and it's like, like hitting on you. What? <laughs> you're like I'm conflicted uh, about. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about this. My pet monster. Um, but hey, in closing, for garbage pelt kids. I used to rent that movie from the local video store. It was never aired on TV. Like, it never... It was just such a... Like, they, like the company that made that film must have, like... We're not even selling the rights to this thing. Like, we're, we're embarrassed of this thing. We're hiding it away. We're locking it in a vault. Somehow, it, a VHS copy got to Video and More uh, in my hometown of North Bend, Oregon. And whenever it was available to rent, I'd rent it. I, I actually liked it. Um, I didn't. I didn't understand as a kid that it was an absolute shitter. Um, does it have its flaws? Yes. Is it kind of charming? And is it kind of a cult film now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but looking back at it, it sucked. Does uh, it scare time. the shit out of me? Yes. It was just like uh, the characters were so. I understand that the characters are gross and garbage pill kids, but like. They were pretty gross uh, in the in the movie. I can't imagine a kid being like, "This is awesome." Like, I was a kid watching it. 
one of them's zits or whatever kept oh yeah. Off and stuff. yeah 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 um let's get into the second story here um so speaking of companies locking ip into you know uh safes and never looking at them again individuals that worked on the batgirl movie recently attended funeral screenings of the film oh. on the wb lot before the film is locked away forever in a vault and uh so the people who worked on the film are actually actually had a chance to watch it on the big screen uh, before they lock it away forever. It won't be locked away forever. It, they're going to do it. They're going to do a cash grab. They're going to need to up their subscription sometime in the next two or three years, and it's going to be like for the first time on uh, HBO Max. Batgirl finally gets you know kind of like the Zack Snyder Justice League cut. Yeah, maybe. I think that's that's going to happen. So. I hope it does because I can't imagine working on that hard on a project for that long, and then having the rug be absolutely pulled from underneath you. That would Michael suck. Ke- Michael fucking Keaton, J.K. Simmons. You know, I mean, yeah. shit. Yeah, they fucked up. They fucked everybody over with that. They've, they've, HBO Max is, <laughs> dude. They've screwed over a lot of uh, productions. They have pulled the plug on a lot of stuff. They're saving money, man. They're saving money on its tax breaks by not releasing it. It's it's not good. I don't like it. It's it's not encouraging at all as a fan uh, to see this kind of stuff happen. It makes you it makes you almost want to cancel the subscription because it's like this is what you're doing. I can't support this. Like go fuck yourself. The merger may not work out in the end. You know they could split ways at some point and then it might be released. But I I think it's going to be like a Zack Snyder thing. It's probably going to sit there. It's going to even though a lot of people have no interest in it right now. When you yeah. tell people they can't have something... They're going to want it more. And a hashtag move, it's going to happen at some point. Yeah. And uh, it's gonna, they're going to push it, push it. They're going to bring in the uh, editing, editors, directors. If anything wasn't finished, they're going to you know do finished post-production. And I bet we get to see it in the next... I would say in the next five years. Uh, but I'm, I'm not holding my breath. But if it happens, it'll be in the next five years. Damn, five years, dude, five years from now, according to Josh, we're getting the Batgirl movie released and aliens are going to be sending us messages. No, that's 15 Damn. years, okay. 15 years. So. And, and Scream 12 will be released and Bring It On tw- 13 will also be released around that point. Uh, Josh, brawl in cockpit of an Air France fight. So, there were, yeah, listen to this one. The captain and co-pilot of an A320 that took off from Geneva for Paris. So the captain and the co-pilot exchanged blows in the cockpit while the plane was in air. So it's in the air, and the pilot and co-pilot are fighting. I've uh, always been against cockfighting. So. Oh, well, flight attendants heard the melee shortly after the plane took off and had to break up the fight. A crew member had to chaperone the two pilots in the cockpit for the rest of the flight's duration. Both pilots were suspended. Can you imagine being on a fucking air fl- uh, an airplane? You're flying from Paris to Geneva or whatever, and or from Geneva to Paris, and, oh, we're, we got a little bit of turbulence. Oh, okay, well, yeah, no problem, that's normal. No, the turbulence is because the pilot and the, the co-pilot are fist fighting right now in the cockpit. It turns out that the co-pilot was just the inflatable one from airplane. You know the one that pops yeah. out, and 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 the 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 airline is like, God damn it, we can't keep suspending pilots. We just had to let the last one go because he was asking little boys if they like movies about gladiators. Oh you my know? god! I picked Josh. the wrong day to quit sniffing glue. Josh, that is like I'm serious, man. Like I already don't really like flying as it is, but if I was on a flight. And the pilot and the co-pilot were in a fist fight while I'm on the plane. That's it. No more. And I, you know what? I think every person that flies commercial should have, uh, like a parachute. Like, an, if yeah. you want to, like, why? Why is it that if we get on an airplane, we have to just accept the fact that there's no chance if the engine fails or runs out of gas? Like, we're just dead. Like, there's no like. Give me a parachute. Give me a fighting chance. We're going to die anyway. I'll pay for a parachute. I'll pay the extra money. You give us a shitty flotation device that we're sitting on. You know, just give us like a half-ass 
uh, parachute where we only break our legs or something. Something, uh, dude. Like, I don't want to have to Johnny Utah that shit from Point Break. I don't want to have to jump out of the plane and hopefully grab onto Bodie from the ex-presidents in midair and ride his parachute down. Give me a fucking parachute. You're, you nailed the, the you, you hammered the nail on the head. The reason I do not like to fly. I love takeoff. I love landing. Those are always fun. It feels like a roller coaster. Yeah. But the in-between part, the, I've, I've, I've always been a very cautious person. Like, whenever, even when I'm driving, if I think of every possible scenario in any given situation, like it goes through my head that quick, of how things could go bad to make sure I avoid it. I do that with my whole life. I'm a little neurotic with that. But in the, most decisions I make, I think of what's the worst that could happen, how to avoid that. In an airplane, I have no control over the situation. No, none. And that terrifies the shit out of me. You're a dead Worse man. Worse than Gumby. You are a dead man. If you cr- Like, odds are, that plane goes down, we're fucking dead. Uh, we're just like the Batgirl production. We're dead. Uh, even before takeoff. Batgirl didn't even get to take off, actually. <laughs> they never even got in the air. Um... Hey, Josh, did you know that Noah Schapp, who plays Will on Stranger Things, do you know what his summer job was this summer? Ice cream shop. No, but you're close, man. He was a lifeguard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Isn't that kind of interesting to know that uh, someone with that much uh, success professionally, like in the acting field, is doing something very normal? Maybe he wants to have a normal life. You know, I, I, I applaud that. Uh, yeah. it's, oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, you you nailed the nail on the head right there because he said it helps keep him grounded. Yeah. You know, his mom told him, don't be a lifeguard or you're grounded, and being one keeps him grounded. I get it. <laughs> uh, he, I get it. he, um, I think <laughs> he does, he does, well, he's really, listen, he's really, uh, from everything I've seen about this kid, he seems to have a really good head on his shoulders. Um, he, he knows that fame is fleeting and he knows yeah i think he's even going to go to college too millie bobby brown who plays 11 is also yeah. going going to go to college yeah so, they only got one season left i i feel bad for uh dustin is that his name not dustin yeah, yeah no dustin the kid with the funny teeth he's like the comic relief yes yeah, trying to think of his real name uh, i don't know what his I, I i would have to look it up uh beth oh Hey, Google Beth, um, what's the name of the boy that plays uh, Dustin on Stranger Things? Uh, Gatton. Gatton. Our, mm-hmm. our, cor- our Slash Tracks Action News correspondent, uh, Bethany LaRue, uh, nice. got us our information quick. It's uh, Gatton. I feel sorry for Gatton. He had a prank show on Netflix called Pranker Things. or Yeah, I, I've like seen that. it. And it was pretty good, pretty funny. And the reason he was shut down... I don't even know if they're going to do a new season, is because people that weren't even on the show, just viewers watching at Netflix, viewers watching Netflix at home, and not even the viewers that were getting paid $3,000 to watch Netflix, Alex, just normal Karens at home, (laughs) thought it was so horrible that these people on the show were being promised employment when they needed it most, and then got pranked by a star. They didn't. They, however, didn't know that uh, the people that were being promised work were only promised one day. Like it was a, they were they uh, answered ads for a one day job. Yeah, it was never supposed to be full time employment. They were never promised that, and they were paid like double or triple. You know what that what the ad even offered. After prevailing, they they so. probably were paid whatever prevailing wage was for working on a Hollywood production. Yeah, and right? these these Karens said that it was so many of these people signed a petition and complained about uh, them taking advantage of people that need work that it looks like they shut down production on the prank show because of it. Okay, <laughs> and it's like gosh, wow, gosh. First of all, that's ridiculous, and that's a further example of people uh, in America that have too much money and too much time on their hands that they want to cause problems when they don't have actual problems so like when you have your bills paid and you have food in the refrigerator and you have health insurance and you're pretty healthy and you have a nice family 
instead of having actual problems, like I can't eat today, I can't pay my fucking light bill today, you start to create problems. That's exactly yes, what they're doing there. So that's ridiculous. You know what else is ridiculous, Josh? You What's know what else? That? The last story of the show. Okay. What do we got? A tomato spill makes a major California highway a marinara mess, Josh. Attack of the killer tomato sauce. <laughs> um, a truck hauling a load of tomatoes crushed last Monday, or crashed last Monday, after a collision near Vacaville, California. Its load spilled across several lanes of Highway 80 in Northern California. And I sent you a photo, Josh. Uh, the entire highway was covered in tomatoes, just crushed red tomatoes all over the place. Were it the was cops, a shit show. Were the cops able to catch up uh, to the scene? No, but I caught, I <laughs> caught what you just did right there. Um, here's my take on this whole thing. Uh-huh. If I'm on the scene and I'm where this truck flipped over with all these tomatoes on the ground, I'm thinking, okay, this happened. I didn't expect this to happen. I'm hungry. There's got to be a breadstick truck that's going to flip at some point and a pasta truck that's going to flip at some point, and we're going to have dinner. We're going to have lunch. We're going to be it. good. We're going to be good to go. have the pot stickers. <laughs> yeah, all the people that freaking uh, lost their job from uh, the prank show on Netflix because the Karens decided to screw them out of their work, they're going to have to eat somehow, Josh. We're going to have to field, uh, feed alien life somehow when they show up. Okay, the people on Batgirl aren't going to be making extra money. They're going to need to be fed too, bud. The movie's not getting released. And all Show those up. uncontrollable orgasms from rabies are going to make you hungry. They're going to be starving because I don't know how many calories you burn when you're uh, blowing a load constantly, but you're going to need to replenish that energy, bud. And so is shit from the Legion of Doom. So <laughs> we've tied uh, everything up. <laughs> how many calories do you burn while taking a shit? Do you have any idea? No, that's uh, that'd be a fun fact for a future episode. <laughs> How many calories do you burn while taking a standard shit? Do you burn more calories while having diarrhea? That's something that we need Beth to look into since she's our intern. She is a nerd. Oh, oh, what's that? Uh, she just quit. So okay. yeah, she's like, I'm not looking up the calories <laughs> you burn while shitting. Josh, it's time to end the show, bud. It's good to be back. It is good to be back, and it's uh, sadly it's time to say farewell. So. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to our patrons. This channel would not be happening without you. Uh, if you would like to sign up on the Patreon, even for a dollar a month, the link is down below. I'm going to put the in the, that to go to Patreon. I'm also going to put the QR uh, code up where you can scan it and donate to the channel if you love what we're doing and uh, want to support us. Be excellent to each other. Good night. Have a pleasant tomorrow. Alex, say good night. Good night, Alex. Candyman, Mahalo. Candyman, Candyman. Mahalo, dog.